Hello everyone, it's great to be with you again. I wanted to talk today a little bit about God's light. So I wanted to open in prayer and then I'm going to read Psalm 139 from the Passion Translation. So Lord, we come before you today and we thank you for your love. We thank you for your light, the word, your word that is the lamp unto our feet, Lord God. Just to ask today that you will speak through your word, Lord, and this message to draw us all closer to you, Lord God, to help us to be more like you, Lord God. We thank you for forgiveness of our sin and we thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace that are new again this day. We love you, Lord, and we ask this dear Jesus in your presence precious name. Amen. So I've been studying a little bit about light. And so I wanted to start by reading Psalm 139. I'm not going to read the whole entire chapter. I'm going to end at verse 17. So there it says, you know all about me. Lord, you know everything there is to know about me. You perceive every moment of my heart and soul and you understand my every thought before it even enters my mind. You are so intimately aware of me, Lord. You read my heart like an open book, and you know all the words I'm about to speak before I even start a sentence. You know every step I will take before my journey even begins. You've gone into my future to prepare the way, and in kindness you follow behind me to spare me from the harm of my past. With your hand of love upon my life, you impart a blessing to me. This is just too wonderful, deep and incomprehensible. Your understanding of me brings me to wonder and strength. Where could I go from your spirit? Where could I run and hide from your face? If I go up to heaven, you're there. If I go down to the realm of the dead, you're there too. If I fly with wings into the shining dawn, you're there. If I fly into the radiant sunset, you're there waiting. Wherever I go, your hand will guide me. Your strength will empower me. It is impossible to disappear from you or to ask the darkness to hide me, for your presence is everywhere, bringing light into my night. There is no such thing as darkness with you. The night to you is as bright as the day. There's no difference between the two. You formed my innermost being, shaping my delicate inside and my intricate outside, and wove them all together in my mother's womb. I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. Everything you do is marvelously breathtaking. It simply amazes me to think about it. How thoroughly you know me, Lord. You even formed every bone in my body when you created me in the secret place, carefully, skillfully shaping me from nothing to something. You saw who you created me to be before I became me. Before I ever seen the light of day, the number of days you planned for me were already recorded in your book. Every single moment you are thinking of me, how precious and wonderful to consider that you cherish me constantly in your every thought. Oh God, your desires toward me are more than the grains of sand on every shore. When I awake each morning, you'll still, you're still with me. So part in here that I was going to um, talk about today was it is impossible to disappear from you or to ask the darkness to hide me Your for your presence is everywhere bringing light into my night. What a comforting piece that is. So often when I make a purchase that requires reading a manual, I like the challenge of figuring things out without reading all the fine print. Much the opposite to my husband, who always reads the whole manual. He <laughs> he. Well, I have found from past experience that moving ahead without reading the manual has most often gotten me in trouble. Example, mm, I have leftover parts. Or the appliance is much harder to operate than I anticipated because I overlooked the shortcuts in the manual. How about you? 
Can you relate to me? Parts left over. Or are you an avid reader like my husband who meticulously moves forward cautiously and with direction with written instructions? I liken this to the way that many do life. I have learned more than once. I have heard more than once. Wow, parenting is so challenging. I wish it came with a manual. Well, much to our surprise, yes, it does. The Bible is God's complete handbook. So many directions and information to keep us out of harm's way and to help us to get through this life. The other day I was reading Isaiah 1, and it always amazes me about the modern day descriptions that God used in his word. It surprised me to see it said in the NLT version that I was reading, it went like this. Beautiful Jerusalem stands abandoned like a watchman's shelter in a vineyard, like a lean-to in a cucumber field, after the harvest, like a hopeless city under siege. The same verse in the New King James Version goes like this. So the daughter of Zion is left as a booth in a vineyard, as a hut in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. What struck me as amazing is the talk about cucumbers. Wow, I did not realize that cucumbers grew in those times in fields, just like now. Well, maybe now they grow more in greenhouses, mass production. But nevertheless, cucumber fields in scripture written before Christ? The wording often just reinforces to me that God is all-knowing and all-encompassing. When to think maybe three to four thousand years ago, there was talk of cucumber crops. Another one I was reading lately that also reinforced God's inspired word is for yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and it went like this. In the New King James Version, Acts 5 and 15, it says, So they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches. Then at least the shadow of Peter passing might fall on some of them. Wow, couches? Not just a modern day comfort. Do you find similar things when you read that just remind you that God is omnipotent and his word will never grow old? So often we read and come across something that we have seemingly never read before. Although the Bible has anywhere between 1,000 and 3,000 pages, depending on the translation, whether it is a concordance containing so much more learning for us or not. Yes, the Bible is still listed on Google as the number one best-selling book, with over 5 billion copies sold. Oh, and yes, several others have started to come close in the past few years, like The Da Vinci Code or Harry Potter modern day books that might that many want to read but you know that these books will soon be outdated and grow old unlike the bible god's word that stays fresh and feeds us in the 20th century the same as it did in 500 a.d isn't that just mind-boggling god has given us his instruction manual to help us navigate through this life his light for darkness, his wisdom to guide us, and his faithful promises that are all yes and amen. What more could we want? In Genesis 1, God commanded, let there be light. And that light has shone on his creation ever since. His light that pushes back all darkness and the light that he created to fill the earth that was then formless and empty. Right from the very beginning of time, light has been referred to as good. God said it. I don't like the dark very much. Being unable to see where I'm going is challenging and scary. 
In Strathroy, it seems that we experience more power outages than in neighboring cities. I hear that from my daughter who moved to Strathroy a couple of years ago, who formerly lived in London, and she said, we've never had that many power outages in our, in our former home. I'm unsure as to why, but when it happens late at night, I always want to have an emergency light to help me get around as I find that candles are not that safe. We have a large emergency light at our house that comes on for us anytime the hydro goes out. And it's so comforting to know we aren't going to stumble and fall or stub our toes on things we can't see. God has given us each this huge emergency light for life. It's his word to guide us through all the dark places. A scripture for every situation we might face, whether that be a situation of joy or a burden, whether that be a situation of trial or a blessing. He is just magnificent. So when our emergency light comes on at my house, when our power goes out, it does not need to fight the darkness to bring light to us because its light automatically makes all the darkness disappear. It's completely gone. It's the same with God's light because in the name of Jesus, yes, all darkness must flee. How powerful. Have you claimed Jesus' name over anything lately? Remember, it is a powerful weapon against the darkness. Although God has freely given us his light, the light of his word, to help us maneuver through the darkness, he also allows us to experience dark times too. He wants us to be strong and trust him. And if we are always in the light, we will never grow closer and more dependent on him. I think often without any darkness, we would never see the stars. And I think God made light on day one of creation because it was an expression of himself. God is light. There is something so comforting about that. A quote I read lately goes like this. I love the light for it shows me the way. Yet I will endure the darkness for it shows me the stars. Years ago in the age of B.C., or before COVID, we used to have candlelight services at our church, and I surely love them. Everyone had a candle to hold, and they lit it up once the lights were turned off. The light was magnificent and really encouraged me that together our lights can shine to dispel darkness, to help each other. We are a family of believers, and we need to shine our light on others to help them through the dark valleys by encouraging them and praying for them. Isn't it a wonderful blessing to be part of his church? I love the scripture in Ecclesiastes 4 and 10 that reminds me of that blessing again and again. And it goes like this. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. A Christian friend is like no other because they can usher in the power of God over our, our circumstances through their prayers for us. Now that is so amazing, isn't it? A body of believers is surely a blessing. In Joshua 23 and 10 in the NIV, it says, one of you can put a thousand to flight because the Lord your God fights for you just as he promised. So ways that we can be more receiving of God's light goes like this. We can pray and we can seek God's will. We can ask him. We can participate in the life and worship of his church. Be a part of the body of believers. You will be truly blessed. You will receive more of God's light by reading and reflecting on scripture in his word. So awesome. It is the lamp unto our feet. You will receive more of God's light by taking part in communion, doing this in remembrance of him and what he did, his body and his blood that were shed and broken. We can get more of his light or receive more of his light by opening our lives to the Holy Spirit and inviting him in, not keeping him at a distance, 
or trying to understand, but by being open and welcome to the Holy Spirit and trusting that God is a triune God. I love the song, This Little Light of Mine, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, this little light of mine. To walk in God's light, we must also surrender our fears, because by holding our fear onto our fear, it delays the comfort that God wants to bring us. When we feel lost or overwhelmed, we just need to turn to the light, not to the left or to the right, but to the light straight ahead, his light, his word his truth, his loving kindness, and his name, then all the darkness we face will flee. Sometimes we are so hard on ourselves when we walk in darkness, and we flounder. But you know, we just need to allow ourselves a little mercy like God does. Because he knows we are a masterpiece and a work in progress at the same time. He has grace that is sufficient and his love that is never ending. What a relief to know and believe that. Scripture teaches us that light is a powerful descriptive of who our awesome and faithful and all-knowing God is. Some of these scriptures are 1 John 1 and 5, which describes God's nature. It says there, God is pure light. You will never find even a trace of darkness in him. And in Psalm 43 and 3, it describes God and his word. Send out your light and your truth and let them guide me. Let them lead me to your holy mountain, to the place where you live. And in Daniel 2 and 22, it describes God's wisdom. He reveals deep and mysterious things and knows what lies hidden in the darkness, though he is surrounded by light. And in Psalm 4 and 6, it describes God's favor. Lord, prove them wrong when they say God can't help you. Let the light of your radiant face break through and shine upon us. And in Psalm 78 and 14, it describes God's guidance. Day by day, the glory cloud led them forward. And all through the night, the fire cloud stood as a sentry of light. You know, there is no middle ground with God's light. No half dark. In 1 John 1 and 5, it said, God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. That is so comforting. All the darkness is gone. And in John 3 and 19, it also said that light has come into the world, but people love the darkness instead of the light because their deeds were evil. God knows that some people still choose to live in darkness, even though God has given them his great light to set them free. So today I wanted to read the words to a song, and I've attached that clip at the end of this teaching. It's a song that was, uh, I've never heard of this singer, and I totally believe that God showed me this um, songwriter um, to encourage you, but to encourage me. And her name is Christy Knuckles. Christy Knuckles has a sign and it's called Keep the a Song. It's called Keep the Light On. This song was one of the songs that was um, part of the worship of the Passion Conference that I have um, talked about in the last few teachings that was held in uh, Mercedes-Benz Stadium in the U.S. over New Year's for young people 18 to 26 years of age. And Christy Knuckles' song just touched my heart. I've been playing it over and over and over again. So before I read the words to that song, I wanted to close in prayer. Lord, I just thank you so much. We thank you so much today, Lord God, for your light. Your light that dispels all darkness in this world, in our lives. All darkness that we face, no matter what, Lord God. 
And I just ask, we ask today that you will help us to seek you and your face and your word and your truth when darkness tries to overcome us. Lord, will you help us to be encouraging to others who are walking in darkness, to help our light shine on them, not our light, but your light that shines through us, to help in their time of struggle and darkness. And we thank you, Jesus, that in your name, all darkness must flee. We thank you for your freedom. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your blessings. We ask that you will direct our steps in order that they will please you, Lord God. And we ask all of these things in your name, precious Jesus. Amen. So the song Keep the Light On by Christy Knuckles goes like this. And please click on the video because reading the words... Um, is awesome but worshiping to it and listening to the music is just it just brings you into God's presence it's so wonderful so it goes the moon is sitting in its favorite moment the stars are by his side but I can tell it's going to take you a minute before you sleep tonight and I know that you might feel alone in the quiet of the night and how you long to keep the light on. Remember his word is a lamp and a light to your path, and Jesus promised to be with you where you are, where you are. You don't have to be afraid of the dark anymore, because his truth will keep the light on in your heart. Yes, his truth will keep the light on. This old world is going to keep on spinning, But you're going to be all right, because there's not a minute that he's not here in it, standing by your side. And I know that you might feel alone in the mystery tonight, but you can always keep the light on, because his word is a lamp and a light to your path. And Jesus promised to be with you where you are, where you are. And you don't have to be afraid of the dark anymore, because his truth will keep the light on in your heart. Yes, his truth will keep the light on. He'll keep your burning pure and clean, if you'll let his light shine on everything. And bring all that's broken into the brightness of Jesus. And he will light up your life like the Tennessee sky. You'll glow in the dark like a firefly, and you'll stand like a lighthouse, a beacon of hope in the night, because his word is a lamp and a light to your path. And Jesus promised to be with you where you are, where you are. And don't you don't have to be afraid of the dark anymore. Because his truth will keep the light on in your heart. Yes, his truth will keep the light on in your heart, in your heart. I encourage you to go and click on that video now and listen as Christy Knuckles will bless you with the music and the words to that song. Until we meet again, be blessed. May God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and may he strengthen you. And we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. It's been a blessing to spend time with you.